I went to Columbus, Ohio to Sonic Temple where I saw some really awesome bands live and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about it and put some stuff about it in my planner. Hey there, it's Elisa, but of course you can call me Ellie. Now you probably already know that I love planners and I love Disney and I love cats, but did you know that I also love rock music? I'm not typically like a festival girly, but there are a couple of rock music festivals that I do enjoy going to. One of them being Sonic Temple in Columbus. It's a rock music and art festival, which occurred May 16th through 19th at the old historic crew stadium i think that's what it's called but yes i did say from the 16th to the 19th this was a four day event which let me tell you it was very exhausting but so much fun now obviously there were a lot of bands that i really wanted to see throughout the weekend otherwise i wouldn't have spent all that money on the event but the bands that i was most excited to see this year were evanescence seether plush and Rise Against because I love those bands, especially Evanescence. Overall, I think it was a pretty decent lineup across the four days. I did get a little sunburnt, which tends to happen because I basically never go outside so my skin doesn't really know what to do when it sees the sun. And then I ended up getting very, very, very sick when I got home, but I think it was worth it. I made some super awesome memories that I want to be able to put in my memory keeping planner. And I'm still kind of new to this sort of scrapbooking but going in my planner but not really on a planner page but it's a page that goes in my planner kind of system so i don't know how this is going to turn out but uh let's find out together <laughs> okay so we're going to be using just like a blank dot grid classic size sheet this was an event this year in 2024 so it's going to be going into my classic size 2024 planner and then i did grab some washi i kind of want to go with like a black and white kind of theme with sparkles because i still want it to be fun but i don't want it to be like too cutesy you know and then i also got these stickers in a d stash from a friend while i was at the dc planner journal con so these came from bianca the crafty diva and when i saw these i snatched them up because i thought the black and white would go really well with some of the music fests i'm going to this year i also printed out some pictures i printed out quite a few though so i don't know if they're all gonna fit but i guess we'll kind of see how that goes oh and then i did print out like the lineup and the map on just like a little sheet of like really crappy paper and the paper is already really crinkled so I really didn't realize just how big this was going to be. Hmm, let me think about this. The problem is, is that I want both of these on my page and if I end up making them any smaller, they're gonna be really difficult to read. Hmm, okay. I'll start by cutting them out and then see how I feel once they're like cut out and I don't know, maybe, maybe the time it takes to cut this is gonna be enough to like give me time to think about what I'm doing because I don't know is anybody else like this like I just really want to remember what was offered for this experience not just what my personal experience was for this event because this is something that I'm definitely going to keep going to maybe not every single year but this definitely isn't my last time attending this event and so i want something that i can look back on and be like oh yeah that's how the stages were lined up or oh yeah that's what bands were playing that year and not just you know what bands i saw or what stages i was at but i don't know once i get this cut out i might decide against it but we'll see so as i mentioned this event is held in columbus ohio which is just like a couple hours drive for me. So it's not super far, but it's definitely too far to leave from home every day, especially since it's four full days. So I did end up actually getting a hotel and staying there for the weekend. Oh, I forgot, but I do really want to put some washi down on the edge before I start doing anything else. Whenever I do this, I feel like I'm kind of reinforcing the binding a little bit so the page doesn't get as flimsy once I start flipping back and forth on it. I don't know. I don't know if it actually does anything, but it feels like it does to me. Plus it adds a little bit of extra color on the page. So I don't know. It's just something that I like to do. And it's something that I've been doing on memory keeping planner pages. I think ever since I got the Happy Planners. Okay, see, ta-da, already getting stuff done. Okay, so how should I do this? Should I have it like hanging off the edge a little bit maybe? Yeah, cause I think this is technically a screenshot from their Instagram and it has this little next 
label on there, which I don't want showing. So I'm going to kind of bring this over to the edge a little bit, I think. Okay, that's what I'm doing. And I have my adhesive. I do kind of regret putting this on just like thin paper. My original thought was I don't want to bulk up the planner page too much. And so anywhere that I can regulate how thick something is, I'm going to do that. But this is like really flimsy. So I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I guess I didn't need to put adhesive on these outer edges then. Oh well, that was dumb. Lesson learned. See, I'm still new to this process. So this definitely isn't the last mistake that I'm making for this. Okay, I want to get this a little bit better. This makes me so nervous and I don't know why. Like worst case scenario, this turns out horrible and I just do it again. The only thing I've lost is my time and honestly, what else would I be doing today? All right, and then I want to start using some of this stuff. I haven't even opened this. I don't know. I don't know what all is in here. Are these the same? Oh, they're not the same. Okay. Wow. All right, so I want to put maybe this. Mm, no, oh, this one. Fill up the space a little bit. And I want to keep going with it, like, kind of hanging off. Ooh. Do I want it like this or the other way? Oh, too late. It's already down. And then grab this. And then, is this worth saving? Sure. All right, I want to get at least the first day on this front side because this was a four-day event. I don't think I can fit all four days worth of stuff and pictures on just the back. So I'm going to... Ooh, will that work? Ooh, how high up can this go? Um, But I don't want to... I'm trying not to cover up any of the lineup on this side. Does it look weird to have this all the way up here? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I know what I'm doing. Okay. I just said that so confidently when, in fact, I, I don't actually know what I'm doing. But again, if this turns out terrible, worst case scenario, I'll just do the whole thing over again. And I'll just consider it a lesson learned. But I don't know. I have a little bit of like perfectionism OCD. And so this whole like going into it, not knowing how it's going to turn out is really stressful for me. But I just need to talk myself through it and just remember that my idea of perfection right now might not even be what perfection is anyways. And so even if this turned out exactly how I want it to right now, maybe sometime down the line I won't like it and wish I would have done it a different way. But this is not only memory keeping this event itself, but it's kind of like a snapshot of how my memory keeping process looks like at this point in time. So I don't know if that made any sense or if it just makes me sound really weird, but there's my two cents. Okay, so I think up here I'm going to put a little bit of information about the hotel because like I said, since this was in Columbus, I did stay down there for the weekend. All right, I can't believe I didn't already figure out what pens I wanna use. Okay, I was originally thinking using black pens, but since there's already so much black and white on this page, I don't want the text to blend in so much that you can't read it. So I know I definitely need a fine tip. So I'm gonna look at my Uniball Signos. I think this like deep red would be good. And if you want more information on all the different pens that I own, <laughs> definitely check out my, my pen video. And then do I want something that has a thicker tip maybe? What color goes with this? Ooh, actually, let's do this. Stabilo, these felt tip markers. And then I want something kind of sparkly, so I have black Jelly Roll Stardust pen, which I just pulled out of my pen case that I keep with me, because this is something that I actively use currently, like, functionally. Okay. Okay. I think this is good. I think I'm probably going to pull in more eventually, but we'll see how this goes. The first time writing on paper is always so stressful. Okay, so we see it at the embassy. Swiss. And it was by... Hilton, which is just an annoyingly long name for a hotel. Wait, but we're not done yet. Dash, 
Usually I wouldn't stay in suites, it's just one person, but honestly, this was like $10 more per night to get like a whole suite as opposed to just some like teeny tiny little room somewhere else. And I don't know too much about Columbus, but this seemed like an area that I was comfortable with and that was like well lit with a lot of late night food options, so just in case I needed to grab something to eat when I came back. So this actually ended up working out really well for me. I kind of want to write hotel somewhere. Will it fit? Okay. Sure, that looks a little strange, but whatever. All right, and I have enough room for a little sticker down there. Check out my uh, sticker organization video to see more about my stickers. Which one? Okay, will this fit? This, these are from The Joy of Planning, and I love that you can choose the color of the hair and the color of the skin, so that's about as much like me as any planner sticker that I can find. Okay, well, we'll sleepy sleep. Actually, let's do this, and then I'm going to pull in some washi just to fill up the space a little bit more. Okay, I know for a fact that I got my washi cutter out. Where the heck did that go? Okay, well, I guess I'm not using my cool new one. I'm just using this boring plain one instead. Jeez. Now I will say that it was really awesome having an actual whole entire suite to myself. I'm the kind of person that likes to unpack when I get to a hotel. And so it was really nice to be able to kind of spread out while I was there since I was there for five nights. Now I will say that the hotel was a little strange. My door did not have a room number on it. Like the only reason why I knew it was my room was because I got an electronic key and that's the door that my key worked on. But every other door seemed to have a giant room number on the outside and mine didn't. And then I was there for five nights and never had housekeeping, not even once. I know that since 2020, some hotels have kind of reduced their housekeeping, but to never even have it once for five nights, I almost wonder if there was something, if like the scheduling for housekeeping was a little weird because my door didn't have a number on it. I don't know. If it really bothered me, I could have talked to them about it, but I was always rushing in the morning and then as soon as I got back at night, I was just so exhausted. I was just ready to go to sleep. Okay, how do I want to do this? I don't remember where I got any of this washi. Otherwise, I would tell you. But I love this like really thin stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first day was kind of a mess. Well, it wasn't that bad. It just started off kind of rough. So first of all, did not get very good sleep. The bed was hard as a rock and I like a really soft bed, but I feel like even for people who prefer firm beds, like the bed at that hotel was really stiff. <laughs> and then the lighting in the bathroom was really terrible. And so I had a hard time getting ready in the morning. So starting off, that already put me in a not super great mood. Ooh, I forgot that I had this washi. This is from a shop called Metalhead Planner. And I'm so bummed because they went out of business a little while ago. And I wish I would have stocked up on this washi a little bit more before uh before they close down but it looks like people in a concert like this is it's kind of hard to see but it's like little their little hands are in the air i think that's so fun okay so i just want to put this across the bottom but yeah so i already wasn't in a super great mood like right off the bat and then oh i forgot that i wanted to put the weather down on this day it was high of 80 degrees which was very 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 hot it was partly cloudy but it wasn't partly cloudy in the way that it was like actively scattered clouds it was either cloudy or for the most part like crazy crazy sunny and hot but okay so difficulty with the first day so once i finally got to the event the first performance that i wanted to see was a little bit earlier on in the day and so i wanted to get there pretty early and then give myself enough time to find my place, find parking, go through security, all that jazz. And I ended up getting there a little bit later than I was anticipating. The hotel was like 10 minutes away on a good day, but there was a lot of traffic because like everybody was going to the same spot. So it took like 25 minutes, but I took that into consideration when I left. But then it took an extra hour to park. I am so frustrated. So I paid extra 
to park in the premium parking spot and like the other parking spots are across the street and like the festival is like right there and I paid the extra for the premium parking so that I don't have to walk across the street in the dark by myself every day after everything is over and not once not twice but three times they directed me to the general parking and i was like hey i have the premium parking pass where do i go and they're like everyone's going across the street everyone's going across the street and i'm like but i have the premium parking pass i need to go to the premium parking lot and they're like yeah go across the street that's where you need to go so finally i talked to somebody at the like the first gate and i was like hey I don't know if this is even the right gate because I keep showing them my premium parking pass and they're sending me across the street and she was like I don't know what to tell you just make sure that you stand firm and tell them that you paid for the extra premium parking luckily I was here before so I knew where the premium parking lot was supposed to be and the people that were directing people across the street were standing at the entrance to the premium parking like they were telling people to go around instead of letting people into the premium parking the fourth time I get to this entrance and the second time I see the same guy who told me to go across the street when I pulled up there was somebody else heading into the premium parking and so I pulled up to the guy who had blocked the entrance before and I was like I have premium parking and I'm supposed to go in there that other guy just went in there I'm guessing for premium parking where am I supposed to go I'm not going that other way because that's general parking and that's less money than what I paid to be here and he just like stared at me and I'm like so can I go and then he was just like uh, uh, uh. didn't even I I'm so frustrated like okay so that actually ended up taking a lot more space than I was expecting but it was a very big part of my day because it did make me miss the first couple of bands that I really wanted to see one of them being Nita Strauss who I was really excited to see and then some friends who got there before I did said that David Draymond from Disturbed actually came out and did a song with her which would have been awesome to see but unfortunately that was not able to happen okay so I do think I want like a little a little something something on the side about food. I don't know how I want to get this done. Okay, let's do noodles, lunch, snack, and then dinner. Sure. Let's create like a little spot for it. Do, 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 do. All right, I'm already regretting this setup, but you know what? We're going with it. It is what it is. Okay, so getting back to the actual show. So once I parked, everything actually started running pretty smoothly from there. As soon as I got through security, which went pretty quickly, I just grabbed a white claw and went in into the main stadium. And at that point, Drowning Pool was playing. And then after that, there was a little bit of time until the next band that I wanted to see. So I kind of just walked around and explored a bit. This was my second year going to Sonic Temple. And one of the things that I liked about this fest last year was that it's big and open and the location definitely can accommodate a lot of people all at once. And then the main stage is actually a stadium where the ground is covered. And this year they did add a stage and some extra bands. And I was really nervous that it was going to kind of ruin the vibe and have too many people, especially because they actually blocked off part of the area. I guess it was under construction or something, but it ended up actually still staying really nice. Okay, and then for lunch, I got a Chicago style hot dog from Dirty Frank's. It's so funny because whenever I see a Chicago style hot dog, I get really nostalgic for when I lived in Illinois. But it's weird because when I grew up near Chicago, I never ate my hot dog Chicago style. Like, I would just put like ketchup on them. And then I was feeling extra hungry, so I knew just the hot dog wasn't going to do it. So I did pick up a pretzel and cheese from the concession stands in the stadium, which that wasn't great. Pretzels with cheese always look amazing, and then I always regret it whenever I eat them, especially in this kind of event where then it's just like sitting under a hot lamp for however many hours was able to bring my lunch into the main stands and watch pod One of my favorite things about having the stadium seating is that especially earlier in the day where 
they're not super filled, you can kind of just sprawl out on some of the bleachers and have like your own little space. And I usually like to sit towards the back, so I have like all sorts of room back there. And then after POD, I hung around a little bit for Theory of a Dead Man. which like talk about being nostalgic makes me just feel like I'm in middle school or something. And then I left the stadium to go to one of the smaller stages and watch The Ghost Inside, which isn't my typical vibe, but I heard a couple songs from them and thought they were pretty good. <laughs> And after they wrapped up, I just kind of hung out in the grass for a little bit and took a bit of a sensory break. I don't know why, but whenever I'm just kind of like chilling out outside, I always end up like braiding grass and weeds and making like a little wreath or something that I never do anything with. I just toss it away. My hands just always need to be doing something. Anyway, then it was time for Evanescence, whom I love. <laughs> I hope I spell that right. I love Evanescence, but I don't love spelling. But I've seen them once before, and I hope I see them again. The crowd was kind of a bummer, but then she started playing My Immortal, and then like everybody got super into it, and then the people behind us started crying, and then there was a different girl that was there that started crying, and then I was crying. It was just, it was definitely a moment. We love you guys, this is for you! Oh, that song definitely meant a lot to a lot of people and then they went straight from my immortal to bring me to life which was just like such a power move i gotta say and then she brought out the guy from pod to do like the rap parts and that sounded awesome and people were just freaking out and then after evanescence the next band that i saw was judas priest it was at a smaller stage, which I wasn't expecting, but that did mean that I was actually able to get really close to the stage. And then I stood next to this guy named Alex, who I randomly ran into like five other times throughout the rest of the weekend, which was really interesting. It's always weird when that sort of thing happens, like when you're at an event that's so huge with so many people, but then you see the same people over and over again, especially at a concert, because I think people have their like comfort zone of where they like to stand in the crowd. So you kind of end up with the same people who also like to stand around that part of the stage. But anyway, Alex, if you're watching this somehow, <laughs> hello, hope you're doing okay. <laughs> and then after Judas Priest, it was time to go back into the stadium and watch Disturbed. <laughs> For a majority of the show, I was actually up in the stands. I have the general admission field and stands pass, uh, but at that point I was starting to get kind of tired. I've already seen Disturbed before, and I'm not like a diehard Disturbed fan or anything, so I didn't really feel the need to get up too close for majority of the show. And so I was close enough to see the people on stage, but I was also far enough away to see all of the crowd interaction. And there really isn't any way to describe seeing that many people be that invested into one show and interacting with each other and interacting with a stage. cool because Ash Costello, I think that's her name, from New Year's Day came out to do like a surprise song. I think it's called Don't Tell Me. I'm not super familiar with that song and honestly I'm not that super familiar with New Year's Day, uh, but it was good. And then I did end up going down a little bit closer to the stage for the last few songs. I was a little bit worried about how it was going to be once I left because I did stay for the whole Disturbed show, so tons of people were leaving all at once, but it wasn't too bad. So I did have to wait a little bit to get out of the parking lot. Luckily, I was at least in my car with water and air conditioning and off my feet, and it took maybe like 30 minutes to get out of the parking lot once I got to my car. 
dinner was kind of a hot mess. <laughs> so I didn't end up eating anything after lunch on this day. So I was super hungry by the time I left. And I knew that there was a White Castle nearby and White Castle is always open late. So I figured it was a good bet. And honestly, I actually really like White Castle. So I thought, hey, White Castle would be the perfect dinner, but no. Everyone else might have, must have had the exact same idea because the drive through was backed up out to the street. And I was like boxed into the line. So I was kind of stuck after 40 minutes. That's right, four zero. After 40 minutes went by, finally there was enough movement in line that I was able to kind of wiggle out and leave. Only four cars were served that entire time. And at that point, I was like super crazy hungry. So then I went to McDonald's like right down the road. So at that point, I was happy. Oh, except for the fact that they gave me a Dr. Pepper instead of Diet Coke. Like one of the reasons why I decided to go to McDonald's was because I just wanted an ice cold Diet Coke. And they gave me Dr. Pepper instead and it just tasted so bad to me because it's not what I wanted. I ended up dumping out like the entire thing. It was such a bummer. All right, now to figure out how are we gonna do back here? Ooh, I wrote pretty hard apparently. Jeez, this is kind of like a soft desk mat. I think that's part of the problem. I need to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I kind of want to put some a little something something about Monday when I left. So, okay, we're gonna kind of work backwards here. So I'm gonna put like a little section for Sunday. Any notes that I want for Sunday are just going to have to fit into this little box because I don't want to take up any more space on this page. One thing that's nice about like being completely clueless and not really having a system is that I can kind of adapt a little bit better to the amount of space that I have because it's not like oh I have a certain method of doing things and oh no oh I wanted that to go all the way to the edge oh well. Um, but it's not like I have like a certain method of doing things. So if things need to change, it's like, well, change from what? I don't know what I'm doing anyway. Okay. Okay. So I want to make sure, maybe I'll just slice it that little bit closer to the edge. And then this, I guess I'll just to make it even, not have it all the way to the edge on this side either. Sure. This whole process is taking significantly longer than I was hoping it would. Okay, so this is going to be, we have Thursday, and then we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. Okay. And this is a band that I saw that day. Okay. Ooh, I can't forget about all the stickers and stuff that I have too. It's hard because I want to use up so much space. Helps that make it a little bit better. But that's using up so much space. Oh well. Is there anything else that I want to use? Maybe I'll use these little like label things. So I'll use this to specify the day because now we are in Friday. So Friday. Oop, dang it. I knew I was going to do this. I keep thinking that this was in April. Ooh. Let's try this again. Friday. This was May, not April. May, what did I say? 17th, 17th. It was 68 to 71 degrees Fahrenheit, cloudy and humid. So the sun wasn't as bad this day, but man, the humidity was rough. Let me get another pen. I got this from Amazon. I don't even know what this is. So I slept in a bit, a little bit and the morning went by significantly easier than the day before. <laughs> I have this little sleep in sticker. Don't know where I got it. I just keep it in my little like reusable sticker book. And then I want my meals to take up a little bit less room this time. So we're gonna put lunch, dinner. So yes, Friday, significantly better day. There was no traffic like at all. And I think part of it's because we got a notification from the app and they said that there was a car accident at the ramp to like get to the event. And so I think a lot of people avoided that route. But by the time I got there, the cops were literally just pulling away. So from the time that I got to my car at the hotel, to drive to the event, park, walk into security, and get through the security check, it took 25 minutes total. So parking for today, easy, cheesy, breezy, beautiful cover girl, like so easy. They had 
the guy that was helping me in the back lot yesterday up at the front directing people to go like left for general parking right for pr premium parking and people were directing people the right way they were like hey go this way this checking tags like okay you have this tag you go this way it took me maybe maybe 10 minutes to park and that's just because I was trying to get a really good spot and I, I do have like these are the stages right here so I, I don't know what happened yesterday but good job Sonic Temple you fixed the big problem also the crowd seemed a little bit lower which maybe was because of the weather because it was so hot and humid and it did rain earlier that morning so maybe people were waiting to get there for when like the skies cleared up i don't know so for lunch i really 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 wanted mac and cheese but i couldn't find any and the year before it seemed like mac and cheese was at like every stand so that was kind of a bummer so i ended up settling for some loaded fries and they were loaded with smash burger and they were fine i was actually pleasantly surprised with how good the actual fries themselves were and was a little disappointed with what they were loaded with. But the first band that I saw was called Scowl, who I mostly just sat and watched at the smaller stage because I needed somewhere to eat my fries. The band wasn't like on my must-see list or anything, but that's kind of part of the fun about going to these types of events. You're exposed to music that you probably wouldn't have listened to otherwise. And then I went into the main stadium for a bit and saw Nonpoint, and they were really good at getting the crowd like up and moving. <laughs> And the drummer faced sideways the whole time, which I thought was interesting. Another band that I wasn't really excited to see at first, but I actually ended up really liking them. Then I walked around for a bit, grabbed a Celsius and a White Claw, and then headed back into the main stage for Dirty Honey. I never heard of them until I saw them on the lineup for the show, but then I started listening to them and I really liked them. Now I've heard some people get kind of upset. They're like, oh, I don't like Dirty Honey. They're just a knockoff of Greta Van Fleet. I don't like that. But then people complain that Greta Van Fleet is just a knockoff of Led Zeppelin. And you know what? I like Greta Van Fleet and I like Led Zeppelin, so I don't see what the problem is. I wasn't really sure what to do after that. So I kind of just hung out on the ramp to the upper stadium levels and watched who I think was Movements. I'm not familiar with the band, so I'm not super sure. But that's another really cool thing about this location and the placement of the stages. With all the staircases and ramps up to the upper levels of the stadium, you can get a little bit of a peek at the other stages. Then I went back into the main stadium to see Anthrax. <laughs> Now, I don't listen to Anthrax often, but like they're absolutely iconic, so I couldn't not go see them. Like they're one of those bands where you kind of wonder if they didn't exist, what would events like this even look like? Now, obviously I don't know all of their band members that well, but back in March, Sonic Temple did post on their Instagram that Frank Bello, I think that's his name, wouldn't be performing. I think I read somewhere that he's touring with a different band this summer. I guess one of the older guys took his place, Don Lilker. Liker? I don't know, but I guess he was a co-founder and like co-wrote their first album. So I guess that's cool to see. Then it was time for Seether, who was one of the bands that I was most looking forward to see. I've seen them before, but I just listened to them so much growing up. Like I've been listening to some of these songs for decades at that point. Jeez, now I'm starting to feel old again. <laughs> And people started lining up for Falling in Reverse immediately after Seether ended, but I didn't stick around for that. I ended up going out to one of the smaller stages to watch Sum 41, which honestly, I never really got into the like punk emo scene stuff as a teen, so I wasn't as into Sum 41 as my fellow millennials there. But there were a couple of songs, obviously, that I know pretty well, so that was really fun. They did mention that they just released their last record ever, and they're not doing any more records after this. Got 
and then I was feeling pretty hungry by that point, so I ended up getting some island noodles, which is a must at these types of things. I did watch a little bit of Atreyu. I don't love them, but I was really just vibing with my noodles. And then I just camped out at one of the smaller stages where they were projecting falling in reverse on like the big screens there. And then it was time for Rise Against, another band that I've been listening to forever. Although I didn't realize they were from Chicago until I saw the flag on the guitar, but they definitely have that like Midwestern rock sound, so I'm not surprised. And the show was gorgeous. It was right during sunset. So it started during sunset and then the last few songs were in the dark. <laughs> And then the Misfits were on the main stage. And honestly, I wasn't really feeling the show. I don't really listen to the Misfits at all. Definitely not my vibe. I appreciate the band. I recognize how iconic they are. I just don't really like listening to them <laughs> as much. So I just stuck around for a couple songs and then I was like, I'm, I'm good. I can say that I saw them. I'm leaving. <laughs> back at the hotel by like 10 30 and I just went to bed early and then Saturday let's use one of these again hopefully I'll get my days right this time geez so this was Saturday which was May <laughs> May 18th like a weird spacing. Is there something that I can do to that sticker so it doesn't look so weird? I don't know. We'll just put a little dot there. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Another hot, hot, hot day. I'm like trying to cover up this picture. I didn't realize how it didn't look like my shirt was that low when I took the picture, but now that it's like zoomed up on the page, it like... <laughs> I'm just gonna do that. We're just, we just don't need, don't need to see that zoomed into. Okay. <laughs> Meals over here again. Okay, so for breakfast, apparently the hotel had a complimentary breakfast offered in the lobby. And I woke up early on this day, so I thought I would have enough time to like do my hair and makeup and stuff before breakfast, but I ended up missing it by just like a couple minutes. So that was kind of a bummer. Luckily I did bring like granola bars and fruit and stuff, so I had breakfast, it just wasn't as exciting as I was hoping. So this was actually a bit of a rough morning for me. So first of all, I got stuck in the bathroom after I took a shower. And I don't know how, but I couldn't get the doors open. Luckily, this bathroom, for whatever reason, had two doors. And I was able to finally jiggle one of the doors open. All of my clothes were laid out on the bed outside of the bathroom. So that would have been real embarrassing if somebody had to come, like, save me. And then I had just gotten a new bra at Target. And the middle part, like, ripped when I was putting it on. And then I almost forgot my wristband. Because I like to keep my wristband loose enough that I can take it on and off to like shower and sleep but I left without it luckily I realized that before I left the hotel parking lot but then I still had to like park my car again go back up to my room and then stupidly I've been watching like YouTube videos while I was getting ready not having my phone plugged in so by the time I got to the event my phone was like below 80% so I ended up sitting in my car for like 20 minutes in the parking lot just trying to get my phone to charge and then while I was in the car, I got a notification that St. Asanya wasn't going to be able to come because of like the travel logistics, which they weren't like one of my top bands of the weekend, but it was just like icing on the cake at that point. But whatever. So the day wasn't off to a super great start, but it definitely started getting better from there. So the first band that I was able to see, I'm not going to lie, I don't really know how to pronounce it. Vukovi, maybe? They're from Glasgow and had like a heavy accent. So even when they said their band name, I was like, I don't know what you're saying but they were super fun and apparently there was someone starting like a can can line in one of the circle pits so obviously it was a good time i'm really sorry if you can't understand what i'm saying i talk really fast <laughs> And 
um, for lunch, I finally found some mac and cheese, and it really hit the spot after craving mac and cheese like all weekend. And then I went to the main stadium stage to watch Flat Black. It seemed like the audio mixing was a little off for the first couple of songs, but eventually either it worked itself out or I just kind of got used to it. Although I will say this was the first time I sat on the side of the stadium that was against one of the smaller stages. And those bleachers really did have a hard time handling the sound from inside the stadium and the other stage, but the band was really good. And then I didn't really want to leave the stadium just yet, but I was able to peek over to Calva Louise. I couldn't hear her super well, but I did see that she was playing the keyboard, which was awesome. And I think she said she's from Venezuela. And then I went back into the stadium to watch Living Color, and I did make sure that I sat on the other side, which didn't have any of those weird rumbly noise issues. And they were great. I'm not like a huge Living Color fan, except for that like one song that everybody knows really well, but it was still a good time. hung around until the line at the Celsius booth went down. They were selling Celsius at most of the concessions and food places, but there was one booth where you could get Celsius for free as long as you stayed in like the little marked off area. Last year they had something similar and I don't think you had to stay in the area, but maybe you did and I just didn't know. And then I went down to one of the smaller stages to get ready for Lacuna Coil coming up, but Spite was playing when I got there and they were fine. They weren't my favorite band of the weekend. But then it was time for Lacuna Coil, who were great, obviously. And then at that point of the day, I was starting to get a little bit of a headache. So I caved and bought a bottle of water. And then I took some ibuprofen, which helps, but I definitely hit a wall at this point of the day. Uh, and then I watched a little bit of Flyleaf, which I gotta say, I know this is gonna get me disowned by my fellow millennials, uh, but I'm really not a huge fan of Flyleaf. Plus, I already saw them last summer anyway, so I just stuck around for a couple of the songs just to say that I saw them. And then I went back into the main stage to watch Breaking Benjamin and the stands were crazy full by the time I got there. So I ended up only getting a spot at like the very, very top of the stadium because I didn't want to stand. But man, we were like baking in the sun up there. That's the first time in the two years I've been to Sonic Temple that I've sat all the way up there. And it was a cool view, but it was, but it was a lot of stairs and it was really hot. You guys know Lacey, don't you? And then I went out to one of the smaller stages to see In This Moment. I had never heard of them before, to be honest, until they were at Incarceration last year. And ever since then, I've gotten really into them, especially some of their newer stuff. And the show kind of made me forget like how miserable I was feeling at that point. But once the show ended, I was like, man, my feet are killing me and I am so tired. So I just kind of like hobbled over to the main stage to see Stained. I ended up sitting next to this lady who was like knitting something and I have never seen that before, but like kudos to her. Made me think maybe I should bring like some friendship bracelets or something to the next fest that I go to. After Stained, I could tell that I was getting hungry, but I still wasn't feeling super great. So I just grabbed a big slice of cheese pizza, which smelled incredible. Taste not great. Oh, now I found my cool washi cutter. Man, oh well. But at that point I was like, all right, all that's left is Pantera. I'm just gonna 
try to get through it as best I can. So there was still quite a bit of time left before Pantera went on, but I just needed to chill for a minute. So I just went into the main stadium and like sat on the ground. And honestly, it was really nice. There weren't too many people in there and there was a nice breeze coming through. And so I was able to get a little bit of a sensory break and kind of calm down and drink some water. Plus somebody walking by told me that I was really pretty. So I was like, okay, my day is made now. I was just not feeling great. And I was like, I really needed to hear that, thank you. And they were showing Sleep Token from one of the other stages on the big screens in the stadium. So I was still able to kind of watch that show without having to like be in the crowd. And I'm not like a big Sleep Token fan, so I didn't feel like I was missing out by not being there, but it was still cool to like watch them and hear their music. And then Pantera came on. And I'm definitely glad that I saw them, but I had already seen them last year and I'm not like obsessed with Pantera. They're definitely a band that I'll turn on if I'm in like a certain kind of mood, you know, but I didn't feel the need to watch the whole show. And especially since I wasn't feeling great and I still had another day to go at the event. And so I didn't want to like push myself too far for something that I wasn't like dying to see, you know? So I did end up leaving early and apparently a lot of other people had the same idea because the parking lot was jammed. like. It took me an hour, an hour to leave, which just blows my mind. So because I did have the premium parking, which means I get to park literally right next to the main entrance, I could still hear the show and I could see like the lights and fire and stuff coming up over the stadium. I basically ended up seeing all of Pantera anyways. Uh, so by the time I got out, it was pretty late and I was starting to feel better after being able to sit in the air conditioning and drink some water. And I was starting to feel really hungry. So I thought, hey, we're gonna try for White Castle again which still ended up taking a while. It literally took 40 minutes to get through the line and get my food. And of course it was delicious. Um, actually, I wanna, Oh, is this gonna rip? Okay, that's not worth it. Since when does this washi pull up paper like this? I usually have a hard time with keeping this washi on the paper and now it's like too stuck, but oh well. I just wanted to add, maybe I can put it up here. I did order the t-shirt that day because you can buy their merch through the app. Sunday, the last day, I was, I was ready, okay? I was still working through White Castle in my system. <laughs> <laughs> for better, for worse. But I slept really well. I drank a ton of water and I just felt a lot more prepared for this day. I kind of found my groove of like getting up, getting ready, getting out of the hotel. Plus it was another morning with lower traffic. So it only took me 17 minutes to get out the door from my hotel and to get into the entrance at Sonic Temple. Overall that hotel seemed like the perfect place to stay. Oh, but the weather was rough. Holy moly. The weather app said that it was 87 degrees, but it felt significantly hotter than that. I think it was just because the whole weekend had been so humid, but the sky had cleared up by this day. So it was just so sunny. And I already had a sunburn from the previous day. Just, it was rough. And so I was feeling confident and prepared going in, but man, I was tested. So the first band that I wanted to see on this day was Ava Under Fire, but because the morning had gone so smoothly, I got there a little bit early. So stage that Ava Under Fire was at and the stage that Return to Dust were at were like really close to each other. So I stood there waiting for Ava Under Fire and then I just kind of like watched Return to Dust on the stage next to it. And then Ava Under Fire was so good. I saw them for the first time at Incarceration last year and I've really started to like them. And since they were so early and at a smaller stage, it was easy to get up really close to the stage. So that was fun. And then there was like a little tiny patch of grass with like one tree kind of next to the stage where a bunch of us just like hid under the tree for some shade <laughs> watching Moon Fever, who I had never heard of, but they were actually pretty good. Oh, 
although they did make me a little nervous the lead vocalist said that like leading up to this he had been saying that he was going to do a stage dive at sonic temple and the crowd was pretty small and definitely like spread out and worn out at that point but he made it work And then I was waiting around for Plush, but Dead Poet Society performed first. I mean, they were good. They just weren't a band that I wanted to see. Plush, though, I was really excited for. I honestly don't know how I started listening to them, but it's this girl group of like four girls that are like in their late teens, early 20s, and they are so incredible. <laughs> And then for lunch, I just got a corn dog and fries. It was just way too hot to find something that was like a little nicer to eat, I think. But it was actually really good. The corn dog was like unnecessarily huge though and a little awkward to eat. Uh, uh, so I just kind of sat in the grass and watched the next band, which was called Bad Nerves, I think. I had never heard of them before, but they sounded British. I feel like there were a lot of international bands this year. Now, unfortunately, Sunday didn't have a lot of bands that I was super looking forward to. I really wanted to see Ava Under Fire and Plush, which were early on in the day, and then Slipknot played at the end of the day, but I really wasn't super excited for anything else in between. So kind of a weird day. After lunch, I just decided to go into the stadium just to get like a change of scenery and Bad Religion was playing whom I had never heard of and honestly I was there for the vibes it was a good time After that, I decided to grab one of the like free Celsiuses and actually ended up running into some friends who were there, which was a total coincidence. We'd been trying to meet up throughout the weekend, but just because cell reception was so bad, we kept like missing each other. And there were some miscommunications about like meeting spots and stuff. And then randomly we ended up like in line together at this little tiny booth. So collectively we went into the stadium to see Royal Blood. <laughs> And then we just kind of hung around for a little bit. We went over and saw Baroness, which I don't think any of us were super into. And then we went over to see Tech Nine, which is very much not my thing. I uh, I kind of I kind of hated it actually. <laughs> And then like my sciatic nerve flared up while we were standing there. I was so miserable at this point. It was a horrible, it was a horrible time. And like Tech Nine is great, like objectively a really great performer, really talented, just so far from any kind of music that I ever want to listen to. Once that ended, I was glad. Uh, and then there was a little bit of a break before Slipknot. So we went over to a stage with a band called 311, I think, 311, 300, I don't know, 3, what? I don't, I don't know but they were definitely a little bit more my style and we were able to sit down so I was able to like stretch out my back a little bit so that was nice and then the grand finale of the weekend it was time for Slipknot so we went into the main stadium we actually stayed towards the back because we're all like old and sore and I think all of us had seen Slipknot a couple of times before at this point so we all really wanted to see them live but none of us were willing to get too close to the stage Clown wasn't able to be there I guess because of a dental emergency like he's okay Okay, he just couldn't perform, you know, but it was still an absolutely incredible show. Everybody was there to see Slipknot and apparently there was like a record-breaking number of tickets sold that day But it was a huge incredible show with a huge incredible crowd. I was hoping this could fit here But it's like just barely the wrong size. I wonder if I could just, uh, I don't know what to do with this now. But it did take a little while to leave the parking lot. It took like 40 minutes to get out of there because everybody was leaving all at once. And it was just so hot throughout the day. I didn't realize until after I got to my car that I hadn't eaten anything all day except for like a granola bar in the morning and then like the awkward looking corn dog and fries. So I remembered that the McDonald's that I had gone to earlier was a 24 hour McDonald's. So I figured, you know, like I don't want to sit and try to figure out where to go. I'll just go where I know is open. And like I'm horrible at directions. So I didn't remember how to get there. 
there. So I just put it into Google Maps, but apparently the McDonald's that I put in was not the McDonald's I went to first. And so when I got there, either that McDonald's didn't have a drive-through or I just couldn't find it. But I couldn't find anywhere to pull over because it was all just like little walking paths. So I was just like driving around all over the place. I saw a wide range of Columbus that day. <laughs> And like, I don't know why it was so hard for me. Maybe it's just like I was exhausted after the weekend, but finally I was like, forget it. It's not worth it. I'm just going back to the hotel. But then I ended up passing a McDonald's on the way there. So it all worked out, I guess. And this time they gave me Diet Coke, so I was happy. So I just spent the rest of my evening enjoying my Diet Coke and french fries and nursing my sunburn, which luckily I anticipated being a problem. So I did bring some like aloe soothing lotion stuff. On Monday, I checked out. I stopped in Polaris for chicken. Chick-fil-A for lunch and had a bit of a rough drive home. First of all, because my sunburn was right where my back hit the car seat. And then I was just like feeling sad. I think it was just coming down off of like a lot of adrenaline and dopamine over the weekend. And then realizing I had to go back to like normal life afterwards. Uh, and that normal life has been making me kind of especially anxious lately. So it was rough, although I did get a little bit of a pick-me-up um, because when I stopped at a gas station to get some gas and to go to the bathroom, I did find my favorite flavor of Celsius, which is the Oasis Vibe, which is prickly pear lime. And I had been missing it all weekend because they had Celsius everywhere at Sonic Temple, but they didn't have this flavor. I don't know if they just stopped making this flavor or they just don't make it as much, but I have a hard time finding it. So I definitely stocked up on that while I was there. <laughs> I ended up getting home at like 2.30 and let me tell you, I was ready for bed at that point. So once I said hello to Minnie and Winnie, I went to bed for a nap and I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll just take a little nap before dinner. Well, I didn't wake up until four hours later. So <laughs> it was rough. I ended up just like door dashing some Mexican food and then I finished um, the Jinx season two on HBO Max. But yeah, that was my weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, at Sonic Temple. This page didn't come out exactly as I was expecting it to, but it's not bad. I definitely am starting to get a little bit more comfortable with this style of memory keeping, I think. So I'm really excited to see how things start going uh, from here. If you stuck with me through to the end here, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I can plan on seeing you in my next video. Bye! Say hi to the people, Minerva. Hello, people. Hello, fans. Aww. Okay, we're gonna let you down.